Hey, I'm Orsin, this is the episode 10 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. If you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to do is to add a state on the client. So right now the client has no states. How it works is that every single frame, the server sends a package uh, named new position and inside that package, there's the data about all the players currently online and all the bullets that needs to be shown. And this is sent every single frame. And obviously there's a few problems with that. One of them is that um, we need to send quite a lot of data. Right now it's not really a big deal. There's only the number um, that needs to be shown, the X and the Y. But eventually if we want to add an HP bar, so maximum HP, HP, we want to add a name, we want to add a sprite, it's gonna, we will need to add quite a lot of stuff. It's gonna cost a lot of bandwidth and stuff like that. And it's also not efficient overall. And instead of doing this, what we will do is that the client will remember what players are currently online and we will simply um, update the players. So basically how it's gonna work is that instead of having uh, a new position package that contains like all the data about everything sent every single frame, we will split it in three parts. There will be the initialization package, there will be the update package, and there will be the remove package. So whenever a new player or a new bullet is created, we will add it to the initialization package and it's gonna contain, um, so when new stuff created contains all the data. Okay, so this is quite big, but because we sent all the data, it's gonna be a big package. However, we only do it once when it's created. After that, we have the update package, which um, only contains the difference. So this is really tiny. This is sent every frame, but it's um, relatively tiny because it only um, sends the difference. And finally, the remove package, we need to notify the, the client if the bullet or the player got removed. So this is um, where it's gonna be, and it's only gonna send the ID to remove. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is to just restructure that a little bit. So all of that is related with the chat and the sign-in over here, and over there it's related with the actual, okay, there we go. Okay, so the first thing we will need to do is to create a container that will contain all the data about the players and all the data about the bullets. Now there are many ways to do that, so the first reflex could be, hey, let's just do a player list like that, but eventually we will add more logic on the client so it, it's a better idea to just create a, an actual class, exactly like we did with um, what's called on the server. So we have the class called player. And in order to initialize a player, we need the initialization package. So that will be the package sent from the server and it will contain all the data needed to initialize a player on the client side. So basically an idea number X and Y and we add it to the player list. So that's pretty straightforward. So after that, we do exactly the same thing for the bullets. So create an empty object, set the ID, X, and Y, depending on an init package, add it to the bullet list, return. That's pretty straightforward. The next step will be to create a new type of package. So we no longer want the new position stuff, we want a new package called init. So whatever the init data is, we loop through all the players inside it. And for each of them, we call new player with the data um, sent. So it's gonna create a pa the, the player, add it to the player list, and it's gonna work. So I do it for both the player and the bullets. Now, obviously right now we don't actually send the package. We will need to modify the server to actually do that. So we will need to um, basically every frame we check a as there have been new players or new bullets create their init package and emit a package with that data but I'm gonna work on the server side later on for now we will simply assume that the server will send a package similar to this over here so an object containing a player list and a player uh, bullet list and a player list and in that list there are objects having an ID a number an X and a Y so this is what we will assume. Eventually, like I said, on the server side, we will actually send that package for real. So now for the update package, this is how it's gonna work. So we'll loop through every player update packages. And for each of them, we get the player associated with um, 
well, the, the player that needs to be updated. So over here. So maybe there could be a desync between the server and the client. So the server thinks the client knows about that player, but because of a glitch or something like that, the player does not exist. So that's why we test a, do we really have a player with that ID in, in memory? If yes, then we check, um, whoops, this is actually pack. Does the package have information about the new X? If so, update the X of the player with the new, the package X. Same goes for the Y. And um, we do exactly the same thing for the bullets. And finally, for the remove packages, this is how it's gonna look. So we send a package with the list of IDs to remove. We loop through each of them and we just delete them from the list, it's pretty straightforward. Now, one little problem we have right now is that we are no longer drawing the players because the, the drawing was done in the new position. So what we will need to do is to create a loop. So this right here with the set interval, if you remember correctly, in the other, well, exactly like we do on the, the server. So what we are gonna do is that every 40 milliseconds, so 25 times per second, we will call this function, it's gonna clear Okay, the rectangle, loop through every player and for each of them, we gonna draw the number of the player, the X at the position X and Y, exactly like this, except that instead of looping through the data sent by the server, we're gonna loop through the players that are stored in the list. So this over here can go away. So now that we have done this, we'll need to move to the server side and actually send the package in it, update and remove with the right data. So this is what we have uh, right now on the server. So every single frame, we create a package containing all the data to be, all the updated data about the player and the bullet, and we were sending it, and the package was called new position. So now we're gonna call it update, and in the update function, instead of adding, uh, okay, over here. So in the update package, we were sending the number of the player, but now it's no longer relevant. We need to send the ID of the player, the X and the Y. So this is what is needed to update the player and same goes for the bullets. So over here, we need to add the ID. So I know that right now we send more data than before, but trust me in the long run, when we will have more attribute, it's gonna be a lot better. So we should be done with the update loop. Now let's work on the init and the remove loop. So what we are what we are going to do is we will create um, two variables that will hold all the data about initialization and all the data about the remove pack. Whenever we create a new player, we add it to the init pack. And whenever we remove a player, we add it to the remove pack. And those packages are going to be sent to the client every single frame. Obviously there, there could be optimization, but that's how it's gonna work. So every frame we send the init pack, we send the remove pack, and we reset it to empty every single frame. So let's say that there's a new player, add it there, send it to every um, clients, then set it back to nothing. So the next frame I'm gonna send an empty array. So I'm not gonna duplicate the player over and over. And now that this is done, we actually need to add stuff to the init pack. So how it's gonna work is when we create a new bullet over here and we add it to the list, we are also going to add it over there. So we're gonna push a package that has an ID, an X and a Y, there we go. So that's the data needed for the init pack. And whenever we remove it, oops, whenever we remove it over here, so instead of just removing this, we are also going to add it to the remove pack. So um, bullet push. And in our case, we only want to send the ID. There we go. We only want to push the ID to the init pack. And we need to do exactly the same thing, but for the player. So whenever a player disconnects, we are also going to add its ID to the move pack. And whenever a player connects over here, actually I'm gonna copy paste this. Whenever we add a new player to the list, we are also going to add this over here. 
And in that case, we also need to add the number of the player. Okay, so let's test what we have created. So start the, the database with MongoD, start the Node.js server with NodeApp.js, go to localhost 2000, log in with your password. And there we have it, we got our player and it can shoot bullets. In theory, everything looks good, but there is quite a few problem with the current implementation. So one of them is that we only send the init package when a new player is created. So if I connect with another player, this new player will not see will not receive the initialization package of the number three, because the number three was already created. So one thing we will need to do is when you sign in, you need to get the state, the entire state of the game. So that's something I'm gonna do in the next episode. But every bullets created, I will be able to see them because this one also received the init package. Um, there is also a few problems with the current implementation due to the priority of the package. But like I said, I'm gonna cover that in the next episode. So hope you like this video and 